Today we are comparing some of the most sold Samsung phones to date, the current Galaxy A series lineup. I'm mainly covering battery life and the charging speed. Along the way we will touch on long term performance and the accessories I use. First I'm doing the battery drain test with all of the phones on the same setting. Brightness was leveled out across each phone using a lux meter. I included the gaming battery drain test into this video and right now we will get a look at what tasks each chipset is optimized for. What also makes this comparison interesting is the battery capacities all being 5000 mAh, yet the results are widely varying and not the way you might expect. We've started off with some YouTube shorts for the first 20 minutes. The Galaxy A34 is the first one to drop a percent. The two phones on the left have LCD panels that are 90 Hz. I'm pleased with the resolution of these displays for the budget price range. At the half hour mark, the A05S is surprisingly still holding on at 100%. The A34 and A54 mid-range devices are AMOLED and 120Hz. Because of the difference in panel type and the placement of the phones, the A05S appears to be less bright, but that is not the case. I had to purchase new models of these devices to use in my testing videos because I had my original units for a long time and that surely degraded the battery life. I made certain that the cycle counts across these are closely comparable. After one hour of YouTube, we are going into the Geekbench 6 test. The A05S is at 99% and the rest of them are near 94%. By the time we had the benchmark results, we see this took the biggest toll on the A05S at a 3% battery drop. As for the benchmark scores, I'm most impressed with what the A34 delivers relative to the price. We're comparing chipsets from three different brands, and I'll tell you about that while we do the disk speed test and jump through various tasks. Qualcomm makes the Snapdragon 680 and Adreno 610 chips inside of the A05S. The A24's chipset is the Helio G99 from MediaTek. Inside the A34, we have yet another MediaTek chip, the Dimensity 1080. This is a noticeable step up from the A24's Helio chip in terms of smoothness in my daily operation, and it has been a close call between this chip and the chipset inside of the A54. In that, we have the Exynos 1380. By the way, I selected 1080p video for the video recording quality on all of them. After 15 minutes of recording video, the most significant battery decrease was seen on the A14 5G and it's now sitting below 85%. So far, the A05S had a steady lead, but things are about to change. Heading into the second hour, I was very happy to see all of them above 80%. One of my favorite hardware features that all of these share is the micro SD card slot. Unfortunately, this was left out of the S23 FE. If you want a quick way to transfer photos without needing fast Wi-Fi, these phones all have you covered. Unlike the higher end S series devices, these do not have the ability to change the panel resolution in the display settings. On flagships, we can downscale it and save battery life. The A05S has fallen out of the top spot, and now the A24 is in the lead. I loaded up some web pages, scrolled X for a bit, and returned to YouTube before going on standby break. I wanted to know how well they hold the charge when not in use. After 17 hours of standby, I was very happy to see the state of their battery levels. The A24 had only dropped 1%, and a 2-3% drop for the rest of them is also impressive. I headed back on Instagram for some reels, and after this we are cycling through some tasks at a faster pace. These are the display sizes, in case you were wondering. In the fourth hour, they all held up very strongly in video playback and music. Towards the end of this hour, we see the A05S drop below 50%. Now, if I was personally buying one of these phones as a gift for someone, I would go for the A14 5G because it is the most affordable currently. For myself, however, I will take anything that lasts over 10 hours of screen time, and charging time is also important to me. Now, I'm going to take a minute and introduce the sponsor of this episode, Ugreen. If you want to be ahead of the fast charging curve, you'll need a high power wall adapter, one with the technology to prevent overcharging and at the same time not go outdated with your next smart phone, tablet, or laptop upgrade. Ugreen is industry leading in their gallium nitride chargers. The Ugreen Nexode Pro series ranges from a palm sized 65 watt adapter to their all inclusive 160 watt quad port charger. This is the unboxing experience that Ugreen delivers. The compact sizes of their chargers are particularly impressive and it is achieved through the use of Air Pyrotech and GAN Infinity chips. The Nexode Pro 100W is what I'm using at home. It is significantly smaller than Apple's 96W charger. This one easily has enough power to replace my MacBook charger and charge my Samsung phones at the same time. You can use all three ports at once, and I often take use of that. It's able to deliver the full 100 watts to one port, so the 14-inch MacBook Pro charges up from 0 to 86% in just one hour. It's also compatible with Samsung's super fast charging 2.045 watt standard. The link to check out Ugreen's Nexode Pro series is in the video description. This is a company that I've purchased tech accessories from many times in the past and I've been happy with, so I can say I'm very much appreciative of this sponsorship. 
45 watts will be coming to the budget phones and mid-range devices soon. The big advantage that this phone in the middle has is the constant 60 hertz limit. However, I am surprised that it is beating the higher end devices because the tasks that we have been running did not take advantage of the higher refresh rate. As for the software on these devices, three of them already received the Android 14 upgrade alongside One UI 6, and that has brought along some pleasant changes that I will go over in a dedicated phone review. The A05s and A14 5G will definitely get that software update, and when we get it, it will have a similar One UI experience. I just don't expect that software update to enhance the battery life. Now that all of the phones are out of charge, let's review the results. The A05s held up 9 hours and 26 minutes. None of these devices had a SIM card inserted, and the only connectivity option enabled was Wi-Fi. The brightness was around 70% on all of them. Given that, the results reflected similarly to what I showed in my dedicated review of the phone. The A14 5G really impressed me with the battery results. 11 hours and 10 minutes was the final time for this budget phone. Even when I use this phone with mobile data all day, I can make it till night. The A54 was in next place, making it a total of 11 hours and 42 minutes. I have nothing to complain about here. The A34 was slightly better at 12 hours and 7 minutes. I've had a great experience with this phone in my daily use. If you want to see how it stacks up against the A54 in terms of speed, I have a dedicated speed test short video out on that. The last one to clock out was the A24 at 12 hours and 55 minutes. The Helio G99 chip inside of this is not much faster than the A14 5G or the A05s, but what we got to see is the advantage it has over those. The A24 is at the top of the Galaxy A series when it comes to long hours of multimedia usage. The next step is to test them in gaming. We are going to see the charge loss after 30 minutes of active gameplay in Call of Duty Mobile. In the last place, we have the A05s with an 8% drop. The A14 5G was slightly better. We lost 3% after 15 minutes and at the half hour mark, a decrease of 7% in charge. The A34 is in third place. On this one, we also lost 3% in the first 15 minutes and the final decrease was 6%. The A54 did quite well, only losing 2% in the first half. At 30 minutes, this one only dropped by 4%. Keep in mind the brightness and the gaming settings were the same across all devices. The A24 ties with the A54, solidifying this as the best value device for people who mainly care about the battery. At 15 minutes, the gameplay took 2% off of the charge of the A24, and at the final time, a total 4% decrease. Now, it's time for the charging tests. We will do the first round with the screens on to show the difference in charging optimization. Charging speed is one of the aspects that Samsung is falling behind on. I expect this will change in the upcoming next generation of mid-range A-series phones. I want to show you this test so you know what to expect. Aside from the wattage limit differences, there are other considerations as well, like the chipset's limitation on the battery. For instance, Qualcomm is known for making chips that have a very high power delivery. I've seen mid-range phones that have 120 watt charging already. One hour and 30 minutes was the final time it took for the A24, A34, and A54. With the screens on, the two more affordable devices are struggling, and I began to question what was going on with the A14. I connected a multimeter to the A14 5G and sure enough the charging was limited to below 5 watts, but as soon as I turned off the screens, it jumped close to 13 watts, which makes sense as it is limited to 15 watt charging. This device will take an entire day to charge if the screen is turned on, and that could be important to some people. The final time for the 25 watt enabled Samsung Galaxy A05s was 1 hour and 47 minutes. Now with the phones powered down and starting back up from 0%, we are going to see vastly different results. This time it only took 15 minutes for the 25 watt enabled devices to reach a quarter of a full charge. At 30 minutes, they were all over halfway charged except for the A14. With them being turned off, at least now we see charging progress on the older budget phone. One hour in, things are looking promising. At an hour and 14 minutes, the A05s comes to completion, making it the first one finished. 10 minutes later, the A34 and A54 are done. One hour and 32 minutes was the final time for the Galaxy A24. Seeing as how the entry-level A05s is now 25 watts, it wouldn't be far-fetched to say the successor of the more expensive devices here will be 45 watt enabled. Samsung's Exynos chips of prior years have achieved that without needing Qualcomm Quick Charge. The absolute fastest time that you can charge the Galaxy A14 5G is 2 hours and 25 minutes. Thank you for sticking around my friends. Your support on my battery test and charging test videos last year was incredible and I really appreciate it. I will see you again soon.